Hello, hello, and welcome back to Arcade Spirits. Last time, after being after being let go from our previous pool lifeguard job, which you know was understandable, the pool literally fell apart. Um, at the behest of our adorable roommate Juniper, we downloaded an AI personal assistant called Iris, and she found us. A job interview, apparently based on our personality, which she got from our metadata on our phone, things like that. But she's promised not to share it with third parties, I'm sure. This will go fine, and actually, things are looking up so far. So, without further ado, let's continue. The bus dropped me off, oddly enough, not very far from Jennifer's office building, although my destination isn't nearly as upscale as that. This is, well, it's, it's a strip mall. Strip malls are relics of 19xx, places where a random assortment of weird little businesses jam as many of themselves into as tight of a space as possible. Ah, uh, yes, I have, I, we don't call them strip malls here, but I've, I've known a few town centres that look like this. This feels home. Wub sub in the background. <laughs> Hashtag not Subway. For instance, I'm seeing a dentist, a used bookstore called The Whole Story, an arcade, a fast food joint, and a boarded up health spa once called Lattes and Enemas, which sounds. Uh... Hey, listen! What do you think? I think that's two things no human being should ever combine. No, I mean about your future place of work. I'm desperately hoping we're not talking about the same thing. Which one of these businesses exactly am I working at? I don't know anything about oral hygiene or old books, and I'd rather not be a fry cook. I mean, I would work at a bookshop, but this Louise of 20XX is clearly a technological person. The one in the middle, silly. What, behind the arcade? It is the arcade! Who would have thought it? Huh. Trust me on this. I've referenced and cross-referenced and cross-cross-referenced your personality details, personal history, and social media connections. This is your dream job. My dream job? Really? 99.97%. I should probably explain my confusion. Arcades are big business in the entertainment sector. Pro gamers are celebs, five star arcades are social hotspots. It's always been popular with the mainstream. But, well, restaurants are popular too, right? And for everybody who opens one, hoping to be the next Iron Chef, a dozen more shut down in failure. Arcade competition is fierce. Paydays range from peanuts to gold. I'm sure those who make it can secure fame and fortune, but those who don't, well. No wonder I receive this as a dream job. Video games weren't always this popular though. I read an interesting article about it once. Back in the year 1980X, we narrowly avoided a serious industry crash, which would have left video games as a kid's toy pad like Hula Hoops, no mainstream acceptance. For instance, one of the factors could have been a terrible game based on a kid's movie about a cute alien visitor who wanted to phone home. If this game was complete poop butts, like poop from butt, and massively overproduced, it would run really against for years. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed, that game was delayed until it could be developed properly, and the crash was averted. The crash is only just in theory now. Huh. I'm gonna have to look at, like, what sort of, like, real life thing this is mirroring, because I don't know very much about this. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like to be on the darkest timeline, where everything went wrong. Really? The darkest timeline? The darkest timeline you can think of is one where videos, where video games are not considered cool. Are gamers considered nerds and outcasts? Are arcades fashion points of nostalgia? Mind boggles. But make no mistake, as popular as they are, the arcade industry is a dodgy, risky prospect for a job. Plenty make a run at it only to come up short. Considering Iris was tasked with getting me a job I'd enjoy and could keep more than a few months, this left me a bit confused. Iris, is simply saying no. 
it's an interesting prospect, but I mean, are you sure about this? You say you're 99% sure? I'm definitely going to correct that to 99.97. 99.97%. Yep. Can this be like my life world job though? Satisfying but short lived. This arcade doesn't exactly look like a 5 star, and it's no Deco's Palace, that's for sure. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't set foot inside an arcade in a. Uh, 15 years. I remember really enjoying arcades when I was a kid. I wonder why I stopped going to them. Ooh, repressed memory time. I was interrupted that thought, even sure to her My sources say yes. Trust me, when I said I was 99.97% sure, I meant it. That's not some arbitrary number. I'm designed to be a bit silly and whimsical, but my math is deadly serious. My coders made me to be the warm, personable front of a database array that's currently laser targeted on getting you exactly what you need. Right here, right now. And when this place inevitably collapses and I lose my dream job, what makes you think that's going to happen? Because it does. It always does. I don't think your updated base accounts are my family curse. We've always had to, I don't know, compromise, settle. The thing is, you really work out. You always have to be ready for the worst. It's why I take things in stride these days. Does that mean you shouldn't even try? I open my mouth to close it and then close it. As often as my life tends to crumble out for under me, it's not my teeth wearing. I still have to try. I mean, what the hell, why not? Buy the ticket, take the ride. That's what I told myself when I walked out the door this morning, wasn't it? No matter how risky, I owed it to myself to jump in with both feet. And when it all came crashing down, well, I've recovered before, I'd recover again. You I might as well take the opportunity in front of me. Exactly, like the other jobs that this Louise is going to look for, they still exist. You know, you're not gonna, they're not all going away in like the space of like whether in a month you think this is going to last. So, I opted to push on through those doors and see what waited for me on the other side. Exciting. The air conditioning hits me like a cool breeze. Old feet one smelling of copper and corn chips. As it's early in the morning on a weekday, it's not too packed with gamers. Though it's so packed with games, I'd probably have a hard time finding anyone anyway. But once I'm struck by something odd, I actually recognise most of these games. Ooh, it's retro then if it was 15 years ago. Neat. Considering I haven't walked into an arcade in over a decade, that's probably not great. Lots of vintage stuff here from the looks of it, like, really old. But I don't recognise that game with the stage lights and things. Maybe it's karaoke or dancing? Japanese import? It does look very DDR. Oh, I did actually have one of those, like, roll up DDR on that when I was little. My sources say yes. Checking! That would be Showtime Stage, a collaboration of Naihana Heavy Industry Concern and Huber Shreckers in Germany. It's won a lot of awards. Huh. I recognize most of these. No, is that seriously a Mr. Movie's Magic Maze? But the one in the middle with the split screens is new to me. Fist of Discomfort, a hybrid real-time strategy and brawl of beat -em up It's actually not that new. It's been a staple of the esports scene for the last eight years. Two genres I was utterly lousy at last time I checked. And over here is an old lady. Um, sorry, Mum. I was just talking to myself and had an overwhelming urge to complete my sentences. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't think she even registered me calling her old. She looks up from her knitting, seated behind the prize, the, the ticket prize redemption desk. I look at a wrinkly smile. Well, hello there. Always nice to meet someone new in the funplex. I love her jewelry. The funplex. Francine's Arcade Funplex. <laughs> Didn't you see the sign out front, dear? Well. I chose to knock off the first two words when they got knocked off the building during the storm of 1980. Now it's just the fun place. I <laughs> How can I help you, dear? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, the 
because that is a nineteen eighty fuck. Oh dear. Oh dear. A genie in my phone set up a job interview for me. A magical space fairy or something that lives in my phone for me to come here to find my dream job. Hello! I'm a magical space fairy, apparently. I half expected you to send me packing. Pretty important of me to talk about Iris like that. But she took it in stride. Wait on a minute. There's... I think even today you have, like, people, like, said, Oh, where did you hear about this job? That doesn't seem too impossible to me. My, oh my. What they can do with technology these days. I really do marvel at what amazing things young people have in 20XX. Although I simply love to take the sledgehammer to those blasted video game consoles that eat at my bottom line. She said with such a kind heart and warm smile. Please call me Francine. As in Francine's arcade fun club. <laughs> get it? <laughs> Actually, thinking about it, I suppose we were originally Frederick's Arcade Funplex, named after my dear departed husband. Sadly, he died peacefully in bed some years ago. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, don't be. He died doing what he loved. Having intensely physical relations with me. Hmm? Okay. That's information I needed to know, yes. And you are? Uh, Louisa, Mom. Very well. Shall we retire to the office to conduct your interview? I'd carry on out here, but it is rather noisy, isn't it? Yeah, about that. How do you deal with the constant noise anyway? This seems like an apt question. Oh, eventually, you just sort of learn to how to filter out all the beeps and the boops. It can take weeks to become acclimated, I found, but in the end, done. <laughs> again, again, very accurate, very real. I can kind of like, unless I'm like feeling overloaded or something, I can just sort of like very much filter out. Conversation, noises, things like that. She quirks an eyebrow. Well now, that's faster than the others. Not bad. So, shall we see what you're made of, hmm? This way, please. Francine leads me down a back hallway past public restrooms and into a door marked employees only. It takes all my restraint not to point out the extraneous apostrophe. Again, I wouldn't point it out uh, in real life, but... I like that penguins are apparently the meme now. That's, that's adorable. Welcome to our little backstage oasis! I'd suggest we do this in Gavin's office, but it's a bit too untidy. I don't blame the boy, he's been so overworked lately. Please, have a seat and we'll begin. As in this place than its owner may be, at least I'm confident that I can nail the interview portion of the proceedings. I've interviewed here a dozen jobs and held down three. I know all the snaggly questions. What are your greatest strengths? What do you see as your weaknesses? Once I even had to describe how to assemble a Lego set to prove my communication skills. Considering I ended up washing dishes, I'm not sure why, but the point is I'm confident, prepared, ready. If you were up, Dinosaur. What dinosaur would you be? <laughs> I love that question so much. Ooh. My instinct says Triceratops. You know, not a big, like, scary carnivore. Not particularly, not particularly tall, but, you know, sturdy. Determined. What? If you were a dinosaur, what dinosaur would you be? Right. Okay. Maybe this wouldn't be a typical job interview after all. No problem. Go with the blood. Let's do this. Ooh. T-Rex no doubt about it. Pterodactyl soaring through the sky. 
from source. Big dude enjoys salad. <laughs> uh, I'd say out of those three, probably the pterodactyl. I do like birds. Always wanted to be a bird, so hey, there we go. Wait, no, all dinosaurs are basically birds. Let me rephrase. I've always wanted to be a flying bird, so pterodactyl. Swooping around, catching up grass, staying way away from these eaters. I was kind of the impression that pterodactyls were also carnivorous or omnivorous. Really? How exciting! Even if, technically speaking, pterodactyls aren't dinosaurs. Pterosaurs, aren't they? What's your favourite snack? Ooh. Snack? If this was a favourite food question, I'd have this down easy. Tacos. Always tacos. But snacks. Hmm. When you have pizza on a bagel. <laughs> you can have pizza. Hush. Come now, dear. I don't have all day. I think you thought, well, how could I forget my favourite snack? Oh. My actual answer at the moment is green olives. They are my favourite snack. They're delicious. I used to hate them, but tacos were also my favourite snack. I, think, yeah, I do like apple and peanut butter. I'm sure apple and almond butter is just as good. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. The steady thing is a bit scary. If I'm hungry, I need to know that's got enough nutrients and protein to carry me through the rest of the day. That's good. You know how to plan accordingly for any situation. You know what they say, you are what you eat. Next question. Nothing I prepared for has helped me plan for this audience view. I'm encouraged that she's smiling though. Brace myself for the next question. What assets can you bring to the team during the inevitable zombie apocalypse? <laughs> well, I would say textile skills, but clearly you've got the knitting down. Isn't it real or is this a dream? As I look into Francine's deadpan expression, I know she's 130% serious. Even if you can't be more than 100%. Anyway! Engineering, I can make stuff. That's actually true, you know, I've, I've got... I'm a fair hand at, like, carpentry and stuff, and I've got some good science background. I'm essentially MacGyver. I can make anything out of a string, a match, and a screwdriver. I think that's too rocky a claim. Especially if you wanted a screwdriver wrapped in burning string. Good. We'll need someone to build makeshift defences and think quickly in case we get surrounded. An invented brain is always a critical role in any survival. I do have an invented brain. One more thing. Why are you here? The question is so simple and almost actually relevant to career planning that it takes me off guard. I told you the magical space fairy in my phone sent me here to find a job. You're seeking a job, true? But that doesn't really answer my question, does it? Um. No doubt you think my interview questions are a bit silly, mm -hmm. but... I like to think of the Funplex as more than a collection of tasks and people to perform those tasks. Most folks my age opening arcades at that time saw it as just another way to make a quick buck. But, well, I saw it as something else. Something more than a way to make a large pile of quarters. And, I expect, you'll find the others working here see it as something more, too. Everyone has a dream they're chasing, dearie. And for my friends, it lies within the funplex. Now, if all you want is a paycheck, I can provide that. But the last fellow in your position, that's all he wanted. And he didn't last long. So I ask you again, why are you here? To be honest, I didn't have a better answer than why not? I would check it, take the knife, that's what I told myself. I wouldn't cut it here. I needed to actually think this through. To be honest, I don't know. Not yet. 
looking, that's like, I'm looking for hope. I haven't had much lately. I am tempted by that. If I don't dare to take risks, I'll be stuck. I understand that I'm not whining or looking for pity, but my life has been a complete mess for over a decade. In and out of jobs, taking what I can get, settling, compromising. I gave up on hoping for something better a long time ago, but well, the people in my life who were close to me kept encouraging me to try and chase my dreams. That's why I'm here. I'm looking for the answer to your question. But I won't be daydreaming all the time, I promise. In my last job, I was a lifeguard. I picked another focus. I'll be just as attentive helping in your complex. That hurts her attention. Oh my, a rather serious occupation, that. An unusual step from such troubled waters to a land of make-believe. You enjoyed this role as a lifeguard, I take it? Yes, ma'am. My roommate says she often notices me smiling after coming home from work. Which makes Francine smile in turn. I can't say I can offer a role with such high stakes, but you'll be surprised at the many ways one can save a life, even here. Very well, I'm satisfied. Let's get you to work. I breathe easier at that. Probably the weirdest job interview I've ever had, to be sure, and yet it felt appropriate. Like it was about far more than just filling a slot on the payroll. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Arcade Spirits. Things are coming along nicely. I really like Francine. She's lovely. And I'm excited to see you on a new job at the Arcade. The Fun Flex, even. What mysteries and what hope may unfurl. So, if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to comment below if you have anything nice to say and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these in the future either way i hope that you have a lovely day and i hope to see you next time bye